Even though this is the most controversial video I've ever made, I guarantee most of you are going to agree with what I have to say. You see, people are a lot like money. There's two sides to every coin. And just like there's two sides to every coin, there's two sides to every person. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a relaxed person, I'm confident, I'm calm and collected, and they know that I have a sense of humor. But on the other end, they also know that I'm very disciplined, assertive, and direct, and they know that I like to get stuff done. They know that I know exactly what I want and I do not settle. That is me in a nutshell. The reason I'm telling you this is because who we are as individuals actually affects the way that we deal with money. So take two different people with two different personalities, qualities, and characteristics, and chances are you've got two totally different ways of dealing with money. That can lead to trouble. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to go in depth on what leads up to that point. And this is a path that I've seen all kinds of men and women choose to take only for it to literally blow up in their faces. Not only am I about to express my disdain for how my generation handles dating, no, I'm gonna go even further because this is a phenomenon that happens way beyond just my generation. This happens throughout every age group around the world. As adults, we've lost the ability to be happy and content alone. And that right there is where a lot of people mess up at because that way of thinking, that thought process, the, oh, I can't be alone. Oh my gosh, I have to be dating somebody. I have to have a girlfriend. That's powerful enough to ruin your life. And as I continue to build on this point, I want you to be thinking about this. If you can't be happy alone, you'll never be happy in a relationship. Now you're probably thinking, Reggie, you can't just say something like needing to have somebody and being unhappy alone will ruin your life and then just skip over it like you didn't just say it. That's not what I'm doing. I ain't skipping nothing. Check me out. Look, I'm about to paint a very vivid picture for you. Do you know how many times I've seen people bounce from one relationship to another? Like as basketball or something? This ain't basketball, bro. It's like we have an inability to be single. It's almost as if we've been conditioned to believe that being single is a bad thing. Like we're missing out or it's an embarrassment to be single or something. Unfortunately, a lot of that pressure comes from family members. Hey, you, you, you dating anybody yet? Oh, no. Uh, oh, is, is everything all right? Are you sure? Because you've been single for like six months. What's wrong with you now? They're over there keeping count of how long it's been since you've been single. And at every single family function, they're in your face wanting to know what your relationship status is. And after a while, you're conditioned to then feel self-conscious about it. Let me tell you what type of destruction this leads to. It leads to men and women around the world settling for people. And when I say settling, I'm not talking about dating somebody who's slightly less attractive than what they'd want in an ideal world. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about straight up ignoring red flags and toxic traits just because of the simple fact that no one wants to be alone. So on one end, you have guys saying stuff like, so what if she disrespects me sometimes? So what if she doesn't line up with my morals and values 100%? So what if she flirts with other guys? She'd never cheat on me, then gets cheated on shortly after. Then on the other hand, you have women saying stuff like, so what if he never pays attention to me? So what if he only wants one thing? So what if he mistreats me and yells at me? So what if he cheats and then lies about it? So what? It's better than being alone, right? And I can hear y'all right now in the comments, Reggie, how could you? Man, we grown over here. Tell me I'm wrong. So back to what I was saying, most of us would rather suffer like that than to be alone. And there's so many things wrong with that. For one, you're training yourself to tolerate someone else's BS over and over and over again without there being any consequences. And by consequences, I mean walking away from the relationship. And when you do that, you're positioning yourself in a very bad situation because guess what? There's no standards. So the other person just keeps walking right on over you over and over again. Two, it breeds a scarcity mindset because now you're thinking, oh, this person who treats me like crap. You're thinking, oh, this person who doesn't even line up with my values. This person who is so horrible with money that they're bringing me down with them. That's the best I can do. Like there's not billions of other people around the world to choose from. And three, it destroys any sense of self-worth because of the simple fact that you become dependent on this person being in your life to make you happy until boom, break up. And now what happens? Enter all bad influences known to man and women. Here's where all your friends that you've most likely been ignoring throughout the entirety of your relationship come into play. And you know, they're encouraging you to go out with them, clubbing and drinking, convincing you to get back out there again and how you'll find someone at the bar. But we all know how that plays out, right? What does that cost? Money. When you mix emotions with financial decisions, you're done for. And I've seen this time and time again, more times than I can count, club after club, drink after drink, 
girl after girl, guy after guy. It's sickening. It's almost like people lose their functionality and identity as human beings just because of one breakup. I've seen people call out of work, quit their jobs, and completely mess up their money just because they were going through a breakup. What do you expect me to say to that? That's cold? That ain't cold. Do you know how weak that is? Only for them to get back together two weeks later talking about some we're in love. No, you not. You're just lonely. And because you couldn't stand the feeling of being alone, guess what happens? The cycle continues. But here's the crazy part. When they actually break up for real, you know, for like the sixth time, they end up with somebody else within like a week. Now they done brought their baggage from their past relationship into this relationship. So now the new person they moved on with now has to suffer the exact consequences from their mistakes. They really think this is a game of basketball. Up, oh, rebound, alley-oop, slam dunk. Seriously, they're like, hmm, well, uh, you were there for me in my time of need when I was feeling really weak and sad, so I think we should, like, uh, get married now. Bro, what? That's weak. See, that's the problem. Everybody wants to be all up in their feelings. See, that's exactly why I don't even like people like that. The sensitivity, the neediness, the constant need for validation and closure, the insecurities from past relationships, the wounds that they've never healed from just keep bleeding from one person to another over and over again. And it literally makes my skin crawl. And you know the sad thing? Even though most of us are pushed to be in relationships, most people, and I'm talking majority of the age groups, are afraid of commitment. I wonder why. It's almost like what we've been doing is causing so much pain, insecurity, and just the overall lack of certainty that we're afraid to commit. Imagine that. But most people just want the experience without the commitment, meaning most people don't even want relationships, but they want something. Whether that something is money, sex, or undivided attention. And that's the bottom line. Reggie, how could you say that? It's true! And that leads to so many more problems than you can possibly imagine. It leads to men and women running game on each other to make it seem like they want something real when really all they want to do is... <laughs> Here's where men mess up at. They lead with their pockets. And if you don't know what that means, that they're leading with their wallets, their money basically. Thinking it's going to impress somebody. Wrong. Let's say hypothetically, there's a guy taking a woman out on a date that he just met and she offers to pay for her own food. He's like, nah, I got it. Cool, right? Let's say by the end of the date, he done had him a good time. Like he's like, yeah, I just, I had a great time. But let's say she didn't because the whole time he was just sitting back there smacking his food. The whole time when she was trying to talk, he was over there talking about his accomplishments and, and, and himself and everything that makes him so great. And the whole time there was something in his teeth, low key, and he didn't even know about it. And it was just overall an awkward experience for her. So now she doesn't even call him back. Ain't gonna be no date number two, but he's over there steadily texting her. Oh my gosh, I had such a great time tonight. You're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Next morning, good morning. Hope you're having a great day. He don't even get a text back. Then nine times out of 10, the guy's like, what? I paid for dinner. I did this and I did that. How dare her, blah, 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 blankety, blank, blank. Then they get into their little mode like, I can't believe. Oh. Then I'm like, slow down, bro. What you, you, you about to go Super Saiyan, bro? You lost. It's game over. You're, you're, you're done. Go home. Leading with your pockets will hurt you, bro. And ladies watching this video, look, I know I'm saying bro, but I'm literally talking to the guys right now. But don't you worry, your part's coming up next. Anyway, leading with your pockets and only your pockets is a fast way to drain your bank account. Going up to a woman in a rush trying to show her that you can provide, trying to show her how nice your car is, and just trying to show her every possession you got, that's only a sign of insecurity, and that's not going to impress anybody but a gold digger. And I don't think you want that. But it's okay. Women mess up with dating too. And I'm not even talking in the sense of making mistakes. I'm literally just saying where they mess up at, because half of what they do is deliberate. I might lose half of my women subscribers doing this, but hey, I, I threw the guys under the bus. Y'all got to go too. Now, I'm not going to say that this always happens, but most of the time, women lead with their beauty and their words. You got to think, most men have these two love languages, physical touch and words of affirmation. So strategically put those two together and boom, you got them. Women will flirt, make a guy feel attractive, rub on his shoulders, say stuff like, you're different. I've never met a guy like you. I feel safe around you. Making the man feel all special and unique and whatnot. 
y'all some evil geniuses low-key saying all the right things got him all in his feelings so now he's calling and texting you every minute of the day and y'all don't even text back or return his calls now he's over there about to explode now you got me over there telling see there you go again about to go super saiyan y'all send those mixed signals that's what y'all do so now you got the boy on the phone waiting for hours for you to respond to him when he knows good and well he has work to do. He knows he should be somewhere on his purpose doing something productive. And for guys who knows how this works, y'all do the same exact thing to women. And so then the, now the woman, she's investing too much time into a guy who barely cares about them. So we've single-handedly created a culture of dating our phones instead of dating people. Facts. Then you mess around and follow each other on social media. Look, you, you're trying to get your heart broke. Look, you'll, you'll be texting and texting and texting. No response. But then you look on Facebook. They're online. Hmm. Maybe they don't want to talk to you. But basically, this turns into both men and women just playing games with each other the whole time. Just back to back. Playing games. And on a serious note, that inevitably turns into playing with someone else's emotions. And that can be extremely dangerous to do. And the reason it's so potentially dangerous is because those games are being played for one reason and one reason only, to get something. And once the person who's playing games gets that something, they keep playing with the emotions and they don't stop. Or they'll do what my generation does and just straight up ghost you. And that, and that in itself is playing with their emotions because now you're looking for closure. Now you're uncertain. You're trying to figure out why you weren't good enough. I could literally go all day on this, but I'm not. But the bottom line of that is they're playing with each other's emotions. And because of that, that's why you see guys get their tires slashed. That's why you see women get cussed out and yelled at in front of a lot of people just because they're out on a date with another man. And that's my point. You'll see men get all out of their frame and completely act out of character just because they're so upset because they see their woman out there dating some other guy. Or maybe it's not even their woman. Maybe it's just some girl that they were dating for a little bit. They went on a couple of dates and they get mad because they see them out with another dude. I would say this. If she's out with somebody else, then no need to get overly emotional, out of your frame. Because when you do, that, that's when you fold. That's when you show weakness. You start, you, you get to fussing and, and trying to puff your chest out. That's a sign of weakness. I don't care what nobody says. That, that ain't tough. That ain't cold. What you need to do, you see that? Oh, that's what you want? All right. You're out of my life forever. That, that's just it. There, there's no getting upset. It's going to hurt. I'm not saying it's not going to hurt, but I'm saying this. Why would you put your character, your integrity, yourself as a man on the line just because you're in your feelings for a few seconds? How long have you even known this girl? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense to get so upset that you, you start, you get to pick and fights. You know what I'm saying? You get to calling the girl out of her name and, and just acting a complete fool. You don't do it. To me, that ain't what men do. And I can't really speak to what a woman should do in that situation because I'm a guy. But all I can say is this. As a man, that's, that's how I feel about it. That's how I view it. That's how I'm always going to view it. But why do people do that in the first place? Emotions. People are letting their emotions control them. Like I coach and mentor people, right? And sometimes when I'm sitting down for a coaching session, somebody's always in their feelings. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't understand why this is happening. Reggie, why is this happening? This person's doing that. Like they, they can't focus on themselves. I'm like, all right, well, get out of your feelings for two freaking seconds and I can tell you. And they're like, oh, uh, oh okay. Yeah, because I want people to see things for what they really are. And sometimes in order to do that, you have to step outside of yourself and stop being in your feelings. So now we're going to go full circle all the way back to the beginning when I said there's two sides to every person, just like there's two sides to every coin. When it comes to being in an actual relationship and none of that nonsense that I was just talking about is happening, you now have two people with two totally different views of money, two totally different personalities, vices, and temptations in terms of money. So you put them two together and now they're happily in a three to four year relationship and they figure they're in love and they want to move in together. And they're not engaged yet, they're, they're just in a relationship, they just, they want to move in. But then nine times out of 10, there's no plan. There's no, well, if we break up, can I actually afford this place by myself? There's no thought on, well, if one of us loses our jobs or gets sick and can't work, can I pay for this by myself? There's no thought on, you know, if we break up, who gets the furniture? Who gets the TV? How do we select who gets what? There is very little thought with the future in mind because this is a right now decision. 
And again, it doesn't happen like that all the time, but nine times out of 10, it happens. Why does that happen? It's an emotional and financial mistake. Co-signing a car with your significant other. Again, that is a financial and emotional mistake. Having a joint account with no separate accounts, that is a financial mistake. Also, an emotional one. Because we're never going to break up. There's no likelihood in the world of us breaking up. Like, I know there's breakups around the world. I know there's divorces around the world. But we're different. We're, there's absolutely 0% chance that we're going to break up. Obviously, not everybody breaks up. Not everybody divorces. But what I'm saying is, a lot of people do. So for you to think that you're somehow the exception to that rule and like it's not a possibility, that's delusional. I'm speaking from experience, though. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was that guy before, you know what I mean? Thinking, we're the exception. We're never going to break up. That's impossible. But that's what you do when you're in love. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add some logic in on this so you can get what I'm saying. And these are the types of things that happen and the type of things that get overlooked when you invest so much of your emotion into a relationship to the point where you're just completely not even looking at things from multiple aspects and multiple different ways and multiple different scenarios. I'm talking friends, family, coworkers. I've seen it full circle for years. Then years later, if they break up or if they get a divorce or something like that, it's a lot worse than them just being sad and upset. They typically end up in a bad financial situation broke. That's exactly why I'm building two courses right now, a budgeting course for singles and a budgeting course for couples. Look, I'm just speaking on what I know and what I've seen. And these are my honest thoughts. And that's why I really, really, really strongly believe that we all just need to do better. We need to be more deliberate and more patient with who we get in relationships with and who we decide to date. Because if you don't, your time, your money, your attention and your self-worth can all get lost in the crossfire. It's important to know exactly what you want. And I'm not saying that you should expect your significant other to be perfect. I'm saying you should not accept deal breakers, which means you have to know exactly what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. If you say you're not going to date somebody who does drugs, then you have to hold yourself to that standard and literally not date somebody who does drugs. I don't care how attractive they are. I don't care how charming they are, or how well-spoken they are. If they do drugs, that's a no. If you don't tolerate cheating, if you don't tolerate foul language or any form of disrespect, then you have to hold yourself to that standard. When that happens, you walk away and that's game over for them. Ain't, ain't no coming back from that. You have to decide how strong you want to be with your standards because that's going to determine how much respect you get in the relationship. And guess what? If they cross the line. That's it. Ain't no getting emotional or upset. Bye. And then they, they learned a very powerful lesson. If you're dead set on being with somebody with the same religious or political views as you, then you can't bend on that. Because when you get with somebody who's opposed to what you want, you, you might settle for it at first. It might be okay at first. But then when other things get into to the mix, like, say, family members or your, your kids or whatever, then things get a little complicated. And, and that's exactly why you shouldn't ignore red flags, period. Relationships can be a very good thing as long as the two of you are aligned and you're keeping your future in mind with everything you do and you're not letting your love and emotions blind you. That's my stance on money and relationships and when I find a woman around my age that actually has some sense, I'll be in a relationship. But until then, I'm single. That's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.